Hello everyone, welcome back. As per usual, tier list. The Raiders tier are the most recent of the teams to announce all 10 of their imports. And I'm going to be real, I think that the Raiders tier are going to have quite a big fall off this year compared to where they were last year. If you remember last season, the Raiders were pretty much a title contender and realistically, I don't think many people thought they were going to win, but they were a playoff team. This year, we might have a bit of a shake-up, I'm not going to lie. If you already know how the import rules work in the ELF, then you know you should be fine with this if you don't have a whole playlist of every single one of them so far. Some teams have already started changing their imports up like two months before the season, which doesn't make this job any easier. But we're just going to go through it one by one and see where we're at. All-star starter, role player, bench player questions remain. And let's just begin. First player I want to talk about is Oscar Stromstead, Swedish offensive tackle, listed at 6'10", 342 pounds, which is a huge, huge hu human being, no matter the sport, <laughs> that's a big, big man. Of course, when it comes to being that big, we're going to have advantages in length, you're going to have advantages in size, you're going to have disadvantages in movement, and he is quite a static offensive lineman, he can get out there. It just takes him a while. He does a lot of wasted movements on his first steps before he engages on defensive linemen, which of course is a concern. I imagine he's going to be playing mostly right tackle. That's what he did in the Maple League. He mostly ran right tackle. His pad level as well. It, being that big, he might be too big. That's the only thing because his pad level is, is not great because of his size. But with that length, you need to be a fast rusher because he does not need to get that much depth because he has so much length in his arms and his lower half. So there needs to be a speedy defensive end to get past him. But I think if you use a bit of finesse, it, it should be able to. That's why I think for Oscar, I'm going to have him as a role player. I think as a, as a tackle, he is a solid option. There are just disadvantages to being that big. You know what I mean? that He has the advantages, but there also comes a trade-off for being 6'10". More youth on the offensive line, as Eric Kleberg is the next up. He's Dutch from the Netherlands. The team where I'm at in the UK, Yui, we've actually played against Isaiah for a number of years. I've seen him play. I've seen him develop in Bristol. I am surprised to see him in the ELF. I'm going to be real. My opinion on Isaiah is that he's a GFL guy. I thought that he was going to go to the GFL this season. He spent some time on the Paterborn Dolphins and didn't light the world on fire. I think he would fit well into a GFL team for his development-wise and with his foot speed and with his... Aggression, I think, could use a bit of work. Like, I would like to see him develop further. So this is quite a tough one, but I'm going to probably put him as a bench player. He's going to have to be playing a lot of really tough rush ends. And he struggled this season in bucks against some ends that are less experienced than the ones he's going to play against this year. Like, the Surge and the Munich Ravens are going to be having a lot of speed on those outside edges. And I think with these two offensive tackles, who are big dudes and long-limbed guys... I'm hesitant to say that they'll do well against faster option players. So I think those two are the offensive line there. That's where I'm going to have them selected. Continuing on to the offensive line, Alberto Adachi. A little bit more of a positive spin. Adachi is one of the best offensive linemen uh, in Europe. He's an excellent guard. I think he starts on most teams. He's an Italian national. Played for Florence for a number of years. He's won Italian championships. I think that he's quite established. He has super strong hands. Good push. He's pretty good in space too. So for me, I think he's going to be a starter. He could edge into the all-star conversation. He is that good. If you haven't watched Alberto play, he is he's big, he's hard to get past, he's bulky, he's strong. That's that's his MO. And he's going to be playing likely guard. I don't see him kicking out uh, for the Raiders. But I think that he will be a solid addition. He'll be able to get Tobias Bonatti a lot of space in the run game, especially as a pass game. He is solid, but the impact that he has felt is going to be in the run game. Jonas Gacek from Germany, used to be at the Berlin Thunder, he's going to be moving over as a starting corner for the Raiders Tyrrell. A lot of length, 6'2", big guy, can pit, intercept the ball, had three interceptions last year, which I think goes under the radar. That being said, uh, a lot of people I talk to are massive fans of Jonas, and I can see why. However, I think that he plays at a really high pad level. I think some of his footwork and pass protection is, is not great, and I think that his motor is, is pretty low for a corner so i'm kind of surprised to see him coming as an e import i think he's a homegrown player he is a good player to have but for the raiders to lose nidslander to the munich ravens and then bring in Jonas, i'm not sure if those two compare i think that nidslander is a better not option in my opinion but Jonas does have that length he's going to be able to sit in these coverage systems in the zone especially if it's like a cover two or cover three guy if he's sitting deep because he starts deep quite a lot 
and doesn't have like the athletic speed, I don't think, to move into a a man on man role. I think that's quite a thing we're gonna see quite a lot overall is the the Raiders don't have a ton of athleticism. Right? And it may seem silly to say, but I don't think they have excellent movers all across the field. And we'll get to it. But I think the Jonas for me is going to be a role player. I don't think that he is among the elite of the, you know, Marcel Beard, the Ned Slanders, the Tony Andersons. I don't think that he's in that elite category of European DBs just yet. You know, he is 27. He missed a few games last year due to injuries. So maybe he'll come back stronger. Maybe Berlin wasn't exactly a great fit. And the Raiders might use him more effectively. We'll see. He does have quite a good Austrian support base around him in the Raiders Tyrrell. So we'll, we'll just have to see on Jonas. But for me, I'm, I'm quite happy with him being a role player. Buren Gruber. Sorry for pronunciation German words. I'm terrible at uh, German language, which you'd think I'd be all right at given Germanic English language. But here we are. Former of the Hamburg Sea Devils, a former 2021 All-Star. He is considered one of the best defensive ends in in Germany and in Europe, which I think is fair. He's a good 5 technique. I think he slides into that role quite well. He has decent bursts off the line. His hands are strong. He has a really nice rip move. His twists and stunts are certainly a point of his game, which is really developed. However, when you put him against these elite level offensive tackles, like when he played Keanu in Paris, he kind of struggled with that. I think that when you put him against the surge offensive line, he might be kind of neutralized just due to the strength factor. I think that some of these guys like Luka Jokel, for example, or Marlon Worthman in Munich, they get his hands on him on the inside. I think that he can struggle to have secondary move. He has a nice rip, but I think the secondary move needs a bit of work. Of course, though, he has been an all-star player in 2021. He could do it again. Defensive end is extremely competitive, so I'm going to probably put him as a starter level player. I think that he can affect pass and run. He's effective at rushing the quarterback. He played over 20 games for Hamburg in the last three seasons. You know, he did miss a lot of that. Not last year, the year before, he missed a lot of that with injuries, which is a concern. This year, he got nine and a half sacks, which is certainly a good amount. Did that in 12 games. So I think that he is one of the better rushers. I think he kind of goes under the radar. Some people will say he's you know, top 10, top 15 player. I necessarily wouldn't agree, but I do think he is in the conversation for one of the better German defensive ends and one of the better European defensive ends too. Robert Lachmann, also of the Hamburg Sea Devils, they're just kind of going at them, taking everyone. The Hamburg Sea Devils have lost a lot. I've talked about this before, they're bleeding. But Robert played a lot of weeks at linebacker, played a little bit of rush as well. Like he is a big, big dude. He came in at 6'3, 265 pounds. And as an outside linebacker, that's big. You know, he has that tackling. He is a very solid tackler. He's physical on tackles. When it comes to physical on offensive line, there is less of that. Like, he doesn't take on offensive line very well. He got leveled a few times by the center of the Paris in the Paris game. Like, he does have penetration, but I think when it comes to taking on offensive linemen and hitting them with a rush move or anything kind of close to it, I don't think he had necessarily has that package. Like, his pass protection also as a weak side linebacker. He kind of, like, he's not, I don't think, a natural outside linebacker. He's 265. He's a big dude. I think he'd be better off as an end. But Hamburg had a lot of ends, and they were one of the best defensive lines in, in Europe. So maybe he just kind of got pushed outside. I don't know, but he showed that he can play a little bit outside linebacker. His pass coverage footwork isn't fantastic. But I think that this season we'll see him a lot more close to the line. Kind of how Hamburg used Jan Bomback last season with his hand not in the dirt very much. Can kind of burst out into coverage if he needs to, but it's mainly just a pass rushing specialist. I think that's where we're going to see him. So it's kind of hard to grade him. Do I grade him as a, as a linebacker where he played quite often? Do I play him as, a, as an end? I think that he's an end. I think ultimately you're going to put him as starter. I think that he does affect the run well and he has good penetration. He has good wrap-up tackling. It's just taking an offensive line with a bit of finesse and a bit of pass coverage. But if you can play outside linebacker as well, that does add ability to his game, which I think gets slept on. He has an athletic profile, which is very desirable to teams. I think he'll feel more comfortable having someone near him that is familiar with his play style as well. You know, that cannot be understated. If he's blitzing in the time and wires and just how they work together in practice over the last season, it's going to be imperative. Last year, he got three sacks in nine games played. He had kind of spotty areas where he didn't play that much and he would play, so it's kind of inconclusive if he had injuries or whatnot, but I guess we'll see how he performs this season. I do like him a lot. I think Lackman is a very talented player. However, I think I'm going to have him as a starter. First American, Devin Taylor. Kind of a hard one to grade because he has not played very much. There's not very much tape around him at the moment. He played five games, started one for the Philadelphia Stars in the USFL last season. Previous to that, Illinois State, Virginia Tech and Bowling Green, where he did make an impact in all of them. He can go and get the ball. He had five interceptions in one of his seasons at Illinois. He does have active hands, but that's really very limited tape when it comes to him. So it's kind of hard to see where he's at in terms of his physicality and his readiness. 
You know, I think that there is lack of tape and some of his combine numbers don't exactly jump off the screen. Like a short shuttle and three cone and his 40 aren't elite. Like he had 4.6240, which is good. It's fast, but it's not elite level. You know what I mean? He did that as pro day. So I think for me, I'm going to have him as a starter because he is obviously a very accomplished defensive back. There just isn't much for me to go off of. And with the amount of defensive backs in Europe that are phenomenal, I could name five of them that I think are some of my favorites at the moment. But I think for me, it's an extremely competitive market. And I think he will kind of slot in as a starter role at the moment based on kind of the limited stuff that I have of him. Farad McCombs, difficult one again. So he played for Colombia. He's an Ivy League guy. was an honorable mention Ivy League player. I have questions about his speed. I was watching his tape and I was thinking, huh, he's not a brilliant cut and mover. And now when I looked into his combat numbers, he ran a 487 official as pro day, which is, of course, not exactly where you needed to be he plays at nickel plays at safety you could argue he has better football speed than track speed which i think is the case but speed out of his breaks in general is is not exactly what i would call on a level of some other players in this league he does get low on tackles he is a solid coverage guy and he can tackle very well in the box as well gets super low like really low i'd advise you to watch some of his stuff that he does in his tackling it is it is good i'm able to play nickel and safety adds a lot of value to mccombs is uh, ability and skill set i think i'm going to kind of have him in the same area as devon i think that there are better corners there are better nickels there are better safeties than comms but i do think that he's a solid player that will be able to provide for this team if that he's sped up that 40 and his cuts if he can speed those up to deal with some of these guys because he's quite playing the nickel he's gonna be playing some fast fucking dudes <laughs> if he can't be playing outside with the surge and the munich ravens then they're gonna have speed both of those teams have speed even Milan have a lot of speed, and they're not a very great team as I've gone over, but Tommy Wilson runs a legit 4-2 or a 4-3. You're going to have him in a slot against comms, we're running 4-8, he's going to struggle. That's just being real. So I think that for me, he slots into as a starter role. Darian Schaefer, next receiver from the University of Incarnate World. If you don't know, British player used to go there, Alex Jenkins. So I was familiar with the university anyway. He is a very good receiver from what I've seen. His yards went up every single season. He got 18 touchdowns and 1,244 yards this senior year. Kind of bounced around a little bit afterwards, trying to get into a team. As so he finished college, he went into the trials of the New England Patriots with the Green Bay Packers. Then went into the Battle Hawks and the XFL, went into their rookie draft. Yeah, you know, he finished those. He hasn't necessarily made an impact in America as he maybe would have wanted. So he's going to make an impact here in Europe as a red zone threat. I think it's going to be a big thing. This is a 6 3 on the website. So this is a 6 1 <laughs> in this combine. I believe he didn't participate in that because he had a foot injury. Could be, you know, a slight red flag with foot injuries and, and whatnot. He wouldn't receive us to stay healthy. I'm going to put as another starter. Kind of a, a very heavily loaded starter. You know, he does have a lot of touchdowns. So I think that he could edge into. I'd probably put him around as the most likely to make an all star team. It's just, you know, offensive line. I don't think so. He'd be able to get him in as much time as he needs to develop his routes. And I think that there are a lot more uh, finely tuned offenses, if that makes sense, that are going to be able to get their receivers more yards. I do think he has potential. I think that he will be one of the top 10 receiving yard players if they keep him around for the full year. You know, we know how the Raiders were last season. They had a top receiver and they let him go. I really don't want to see that with him. I really want to see him in the league and perform. And I think that he has probably the best chance out of every one of these guys to be an all-star level player. DeAndre Fulford, the last player we're going to talk about quarterback of course from mount union dominated the d2 level that's what i like to see domination if you're going to be a d2 quarterback heading into europe i feel like you need to be pretty fucking good because <laughs> there are a lot of guys coming in with d1 experience that don't necessarily live up to the hype and to be a d2 quarterback you'll be able to dominate he went to the xfl in 2023 didn't play in the xfl for the las vegas vipers hasn't played a game since 2019 that's my concern I do think that he, he, you know, he did go to the BC Lions and had training camps and whatnot. So he's not been inactive. Just, you know, he hasn't been fully active. I think that's a big thing, but he does have a super tight spiral. He has good short and intermediate game. He can run. He is mobile. I think sometimes he kind of squares out in the pocket. Like he'll get a little bit of pressure and his foot will become quite square, which of course is not exactly the desired throwing technique. I think sometimes his footwork can be a little sloppy, but he is overall a great player. I'm just kind of trying to, nitpick a little bit i think for me fulford is an all-star level player six top seven discussion because we haven't seen much of him you know we, it kind of hard to grade him off tape when there isn't really very much tape to go off of you know i said the same thing about devon it's kind of a similar boat but i think 
when it comes to this team, it's it's tough. I do think the Raiders are going to have a decline. I don't think the Raiders are going to make the playoffs with the losses that they've made and replacements. I think the offensive line is still a bit of a concern. You know, you lost Steven Nilsson. Um, both of these tackles, I don't think it could be able to handle the speed that is going to be coming at them. Again, in that division, you know, you've got Serge, you've got Munich, and you've got Milan, which do have a sneaky good offense. So it's going to be a tough one for them to break. I think they have some good pass rushers. I think they have some good DBs. And they obviously have a, a good receiver and a good quarterback. I'm just hesitant whether or not they can make a playoff run. You know, I'm looking at the conference now. You've got Serge, Raiders, Munich, Heldvik, Barcelona, and Milan. I can see them beating the Mercenaries because that's kind of its own <laughs> problem at the moment. I can see them beating the Dragons because I don't think the Dragons are very good. I can see them beating Milan. I don't see them beating Surge or Munich, possibly in any of those four games. It kind of depends on how much they can um, kind of push through with some of these guys. But of course, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, Paris is next. Highly anticipated. People have been asking me about Paris for a while, and I'm like, they haven't even signed all their imports. But now they have. It looks stacked. It's one of my favorite groups. So we'll get to that. But this was the Raiders Tyrrell. Let me know how you think they're going to do. Let me know what their, their record is. Let me know what you think of the signings. Thank you very much for watching. Supporting the video has always been great. Thank you. See you later. And goodbye.